Another thing that we tried to use was use these pores along with electrodes, like I said, to detect biomolecules. Right? You have different kinds of diseases. When they, are, when they have an onset, some proteins are released which are related to the disease itself. Okay. The disease, the, the, at the earliest stage, those proteins are in parts per billion concentration, parts per billion, right? And then as the disease advances, the proteins become more and more concentrated. Earlier you detect the disease, the earlier you can cure it, whether it is cancer, whether it's a heart-related disease, or so on, right? Early stage detection is important to cure it completely. At an, after that, it becomes complicated or impossible, right? So that means we need to detect proteins in parts per billion concentration effectively. Right? So this we were looking at with these electrode arrays. We look for measure change in capacitance, and we look at it as a function of concentration of the protein molecules. Okay, we looked at two different kinds of proteins that are related to cancer detection. Okay, without this porous membrane, just on a flat film. It was very difficult to even at 100 micrograms per ml to be of concentration of protein to be able to detect that change in capacitance. But when you added this nanopores, you could increase the detection to a great extent. And we could go down to about 100 parts per billion. Okay. So this is so nearly five orders of magnitude increase in performance in terms of detection limits, right? But from here to here, right? So that was one thing that we saw in terms of another benefit of working with nanostructured materials, right? We tried to do similar things with the pores in terms of these are highly ordered pores, right? They're cylinder pores that are parallel to each other, right? If you have nanoparticles, you will have a distribution of pores and they are oriented in all different directions. These are, in this case, we looked at gold microparticles and nanoparticles on an electrode site. And in this case, we looked at change in impedance right, as a function of concentration of this protein called HER2, which is used in, which is important in different kinds of breast cancers, one type of uh, cancer which is associated with this particular protein being expressed in the body at the early stage. And so if you can detect small concentrations, you can detect breast cancer at a much earlier time, and so you can diagnose it more earlier, uh, at an earlier stage. So if you had no, just no particles, just a flat electrode, you could almost get no signal in this region. Right? If you use microparticles, you increase the signal slightly. But when you went to nanoparticles, right, this percentage change in impedance went up dramatically. And so you could end up measuring small concentrations above the noise more effectively by using nanoscale structures. Right? So what is going on? If you look at nerve cells in the body, and so that's some neurons that you can look at, okay, there is a small gap called the synaptic cleft, which is about 20 nanometers in dimension, okay? So when two nerve cells come close to each other, you have chemicals that go from one side to another to increase that, to develop, to bind from one side to another and increase the electrical conductivity, okay? And so that is how information is transferred in nerve cells. Main thing is you have a very small pore space and there is a very specific binding between one molecule and another. We believe that in the small pore spaces, in the nanopores, there is specific binding of the protein molecule onto the surface. And that is why the detection improves with a period of time. So to summarize what I have look, shown you over different examples, especially here is, in this case, you have some chemical modification on the surface of the pores. Okay, that is about one nano, half to one nanometer in size. 
okay we end up creating a chemical functionalization in this case called estradiol which is about a couple of nanometers so you have nanoscale molecules that you combine with some nanoparticles to increase the conductivity and you put it in a pore that is 10 to 200 300 nanometers wide right you are trying to detect a protein which is about 10 to 30 nanometers in the spore right this is placed on a sensing site which is about 1 to 100 microns depending upon how big it is right and that chip of size is about a couple of centimeters that is put into a dev handheld device right which can be about 10 to 20 centimeters so you have about 10 orders of magnitude integration of length scales right? so this functionalization work uh, appeared in Langmuir last year and uh, there's some more things that are coming now we have just set up another startup company called Selva Health which will try to combine the detection of several health related issues in pregnant women and newborn babies right and hopefully this will be of great impact if you are successful in doing something like that we i showed you an example of how one disease can be detected on one chip we are trying to now integrate that with about seven to ten different common ailments jaundice diabetes so on onto a single chip and in working with another um, person in our company who has worked with Qualcomm for about 20 years, we are combining that chip fabrication and design with wireless technologies so that someone can use it on the field even if they're not near a hospital or a doctor, run the test with the blood or saliva and transmit that information maybe 10, sometimes 100 miles away, and get a diagnosis. If there is a problem, then they can do, they can go to the hospital. If not, they're fine, right? Half the time, no one even knows what happens, right? And so, I mean, in just the generation before me, for my, my father's younger sister died during childbirth. And most of my father's siblings died when they were just born. Right. So being able to address, this is a very common problem around the world. And even in emerging economies such as Brazil, China, India, where there are a lot of people available and the economy has improved, right? to the ability to quickly scan things, because right now what happens is you take a blood sample, it goes out to a lab, the lab, after a couple of days, gives the information back to the doctor. The doctor makes an appointment with you, and then, you know, a week has gone by, right? In those kinds of situations, a week can be a lifetime, right? So we are hoping that there's an opportunity to take these ideas and have uh, a massive impact in improving quality of life over the next 20 or 30 years, depending upon how long it takes to develop something like this. Right. To summarize, nanostructured materials, particles, patterns, pores. Right. I glossed over the patterns. I didn't really go a little bit into it. So sintered materials. I haven't gone into some lithography techniques that went over that for time purposes. And porous structures I've talked about. Right. Polymers, metal, ceramics, you can almost make it out of any kinds of combinations of materials. You try to integrate it with microsystems, whether it was a package, whether it was micro for microchannel structures for kidney dialysis, whether it was sensor devices, right? And energy, so energy storage we looked at, some healthcare applications, some security applications, right? Um, so like the UAV engine and stuff like that and some packaging applications. So these are some things that I talked about of how largely the information that we had an overview of over the last four days, how I use that and develop that information and apply that information in my research. So the second half of the class, what we will do is try to see 
where you are with some new ideas in your own research and share that with each other and hopefully that will give you the starting point for people to talk to each other beyond this and get some ideas how to further your research uh, projects.